codependency, self-coaching codependency, like coaching yourself or coaching others uh, with codependency. I hear the term all the time. Very few people know actually where it comes from, what it means, um, what causes it. Um, so I, I, I'd like to create a little bit of a video series on this. Um, I'm on Bali right now. I just finished a training here. Was invited into onto a podcast um, of of which I'll add more details below. I was invited onto uh, this podcast with two beautiful, amazing ladies who live here on the island, and they uh, were going to launch like a last minute subject on me, and they did, and I had to do an NLP intervention, make it up on the spot, which uh, I did, and 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 so it, it turned into a really cool discussion. Um, so um, I'd like to go into that because it's, it's such a common problem. And, and where does the word codependency come from? Well, as far as I know, the first time I ever heard the word codependency and when I sort of started to do research on who made this term up, where does it come from, it may actually surprise you that it actually was cornered largely by a woman named Melody Beattie. And for those of you who have ever been in al which is where people go to when they are uh, family members of people who are alcoholics, Alcoholics Anonymous, you are bound to have come past one of her books. And, you know, at the time when I was digging into that, what I found was interesting how the book by Melody Beattie about codependency was kind of written for the 1950s version of a woman. And at first I thought, well, that woman must, you know, like you need to empower yourself to find a job and learn how to set goals. And I was like, what? <laughs> and how is anyone who is married with an alcoholic going to be helped by this in, you know, whatever time it is right now? And also, I thought it was interesting that it was written for women because aren't men in codependent relationships as well? Um, anyway, what I realized that AA, the 12 Steps, Alcoholics Anonymous, successful for many people around the world, um, is that it was originally created in the 19, late 1940s, I believe, for men. So one of the complaints that AA gets that it is a little bit, not dated, but it is a little bit for men. And, but also women are having huge success doing AA. And many of my students have walked 10 steps, 12 steps and with great results. And, and some people in my personal life as well. So anyway, I'd like to go into codependency and, and what it is. And, and over time, the, the use of the word codependency has really changed. And so I have a, a list here where, um, where in the past, uh, codependency w was about, you know, being married to an alcoholic or being in a relationship of an alcoholic. But what, it, what is causing someone to be codependent and willing to put up with that was at the time, sort of like low self-esteem, I'm reading here, low self-esteem, low levels of narcissism, family dysfunction, depression, anxiety, stress, and low emotional expressivity, okay? So that used to be sort of like, if you have that, then you may become codependent. But codependency is now a much wider term and likely to happen even in non-alcoholic situations where people sort of latch on in their relationship, whether it is a significant other or a friend or a guru or a teacher that they they even myself I sometimes notice as a teacher of NLP I'm loved a lot by my students and they they start to almost rely and be codependent on me which I try to you know sort of like no you need to empower yourself after this training I'm waning you off uh, you know all those different things anyway now it's another reason for having it is and I'm gonna again read a list Having a hard time saying no, having poor boundaries, showing emotional reactivity, uh, feeling compelled to take care of people, having a need for control, especially of others, having trouble communicating honestly, fixating on mistakes, 
feeling a need to be liked by everyone, feeling a need to always be in a relationship, uh, denying uh, your own needs, thoughts, and your feelings, and having intimacy issues, confusing love with pity, and lastly, displaying fear of abandonment. And, you know, reading this list, I kind of go, wow. So what you're telling me is that the solution to codependency is actually taking an NLP training, <laughs> especially the full immersion. You know, the one that we do here in Bali and Mexico, center of Amsterdam, Venice Beach, Miami, all the places in the world. Because you can actually tackle all of those issues inside the training. So I think first and foremost, if you want to coach or self-coach solving codependency, then this list that I just gave you is a golden nugget. Because instead of kind of going, I should be quitting this relationship, which you maybe should, but instead of going the other person and your brain turning into a spaghetti mess, as I always like to call it, is to actually, in the list that I just gave you, is to kind of go, where, what are my issues? Okay, or what are my client's issues? And I promise you, if you start to work on those issues first, that that's how you actually start resolving the underlying codependency. So if large levels of stress or the inability to set boundaries is causing a codependency issue, you work on the stress, you work on the inability to set boundaries or the inability to set no. Does that make sense at all? So you actually take away, you self-empower yourself, you, sell, you empower your client. And so that's my little take about dependency. I'm going to do a short series for quick NLP interventions that you could start resolving codependency issues starting next week.